Hello there, I'm going to assist you in installing your own dedicated Project Zomboid server. Well, a couple things you're going to need. So if you have a lying around PC at your home or anything that's basically got 4 gigs and up in terms of memory or RAM, I would recommend using that so you don't you're taking the stress away from your own PC for when you have friends and that playing on your game. So a couple things you're going to need to do is download Steam CMD. I will provide the link at the bottom of the video. Once we have Steam CMD basically extracted, what I would recommend is you're going to download in a file similar to this. Let me just go get rid of that one. It's normally going to go here. We extract the files. We're going to have it onto our desktop because that's where I want to have the server. There we go. I'm going to pop it down here. We can open the file. We are going to run Steam CMD. It is then going to install that for us. Cool, now it's basically installed Steam CMD onto our desktop into that folder. So what we're going to do now is to get the game files, we're going to go login anonymous and hit enter. It's then going to log in anonymously to Steam as a basically just an anonymous client. And then from here, now we're logged in anonymous, we are going to say app underscore updates and then the code we're going to want is this one. So it's going to be 380870 and then validate. You can hit enter here, it will then run the script, download the game and then verify it. It takes a while depending on your internet. Um, Project Zomboid servers are not the fastest when it comes to downloading on Steam, I'll be honest with you there. But once it's all installed and downloaded the files, and it's there, you can just type quit and then leave. Or you can just close on the top here. Either one's fine, it's just quicker to type quit for some reason. Cool. Now we've got the files installed. What we can do is we can have the Project Zomboid folder. I've renamed my Steam CMD folder the Project Zomboid and open it up over here. From here, we are going to see all these files over here. So one thing I like to do is I might like to make a folder or a file or bat file where I can update my game. So if you wanted to do something like that, you go view, have file extensions on. We are then going to go new text folder. I'm going to call it SM something like this. So up dates and we're going to remove the .txt and call it .bat. Yes, we want to save it like that. We are then going to right click on this, edit, and you're going to type in basically what we had typed in earlier. So it's going to be steam, well, slightly different. So we're going to type steam cmd.exe plus login anonymous plus app update with the game files num or the game ID validate plus quit so it automatically closed for us. So we just copy there, save. I will have this at the bottom of the page if you guys need it. So now every time we run this, it'll automatically validate our game for us and check the version. I should have typed quit, but eh, it's already done. Cool, so now we've got them this far. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go Steam Apps, Common, Project Zomboy, Dedicated Server, there's going to be three different folders. So there's the no stream, there's a 32 bit and a 64 bit and a 64 bit no stream. Uh, no steam, sorry. So I'm, I normally don't use this one. Well, I've only not really been using it long. But the 32 bit ones only if you're running a 32 bit system. One thing I will change here is depending on how much RAM you have as a system, if you only want to use a couple gigs for your game. So at the moment for my servers, I've got 12 gigs for my server small PC. So I tend to have it at eight. So we're gonna change both of those to what we want and we're gonna save. Cool. 
we are then going to run this folder for the one that we want so another thing while this is loading it's going to request you to have port forwarding enabled on your router so what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to go into CMD so command prompt we're going to go IP config hit enter so what you're going to do is you're going to grab this IP address over here and then this is what you're going to use for your server for you tell it basically where what IP address to forward you are then going to set it to look for UDP well you're going to send it to UDP and then the either port forwards okay I can't see them on here but I'll, I've got them typed out over here so it's 16261 and you're just going to port forward 16262 and this is going to be for UDP so that's what you're going to need for port forwarding for the server to be available so your friends can join okay now back to this what now this has gotten to a point where it's actually entering new administration password because it's gonna do this on the first run so I'm gonna make it something simple like one two three one two three this is for the admin essentially so this is your admin password for the game so if you want to log into the server as an admin this is what you're going to need I'm gonna hit enter see so it's created admin password I already have wait no I don't have the settings set up for this PC it's for my server so it's going to initialize install the folders for the server itself but the main folders we are looking for it to download if I'm not mistaken I already have the folders installed we're going to go this PC here users your user and then all the way at the bottom you're going to see a folder called zomboid so this is where your actual server folders and your game folders are going to be in this case we're going to go server I've had a few attempts for troubleshooting these ones we don't need so the one we do need is the server test.ini this is going to be where you change all the settings for your server essentially so when I open this up it's going to give you a whole bunch oh yeah firewall messages is going to pop up to say allow okay so from here it's going to allow you to change how many people you can have on the server um, basically the loot that you can get also like the different settings like display usernames if people get killed do they get a notification on the server to say this person's died or anything like that but we can also add our mods here so with here you'll just add the steam ID for the mod and I know there's one other place that you have to add it's if I'm not mistaken I'll probably have to make a video on that and then there are your two port numbers that is going to be asking for which we will have already set up through the um, port forwarding on the router and then um, yeah pretty much so you can actually change the server name and everything here you can also even change like what items people spawn with you're probably gonna to have to look at the item registration and IDs for that type of stuff to get that sorted but for most thing what most people are going to be interested in is for the name wait no it's going to be public there we go public so at the moment the server is called that but you can call it pretty much whatever you want cool once your server has pretty much been run and whatnot we're going to go back into your projects on board folder we are then going to go steam apps common product jobs on board and then we're going to run the server and this will run it with the settings that you've changed cool and then pretty much once you're done 
what we can do is we can open up our projects on board. So the things we have done, we've port forwarded to, from, on our main router and whatnot from the server to the public one, or open IP I guess, or whatever you want to call it. But once that's all done and dusted, you're running the server, you've changed the settings you want, you've port forwarded, we are going to run the game and hit come on we're going to hit join I've already saved mine because I've got a because obviously I'm running it all on the same server here I've, if you ever want to do it that's just what my route is you basically would type in whatever your IP address is for your server PC with the port forward for 16.2.6.1 or 6.2 and it'll open up well, basically it'll start loading into the server for you. I will be honest, it takes a while for it to eventually get added to the game server lists. So if you really want to play with your friends and you can connect to the server and you can do whatever you want inside of it, you're probably going to have to go into Google, type in my IP, grab your IP address and then give it to your friends that you wants to join onto the game with you. Don't willy-nilly hand it over, I would say. And then they're also going to need that port because it's going to ask them at the end. And basically once this is all done and dusted, you'll pretty much have a server you can jump into and play with your friends. Oof, that's quite loud. Um, but there we go, pretty much. And... Yeah, I'm just going to quit here and I'll show you quickly on to the other thing what we're going to be doing. Cool, so if you wanted to have your friends join, you'll go join, go internet because there's a few options. They, you're going to give your IP address, they're going to type into here. The port is already pretty much here, so 16261 or 62. If you've got a server password, put it on over here, and then they can make a username and obviously the password for that user they're going to be playing as. And pretty much you should be done and dusted. Hope this has helped you guys, and yeah, see how it goes. Cheers, let me know, and um, like and subscribe please. Um, I'd really appreciate it. Thanks, eh? Bye.